So for many, many times before on this channel, I have ripped apart sporty SUVs. I don't like the fact that a lot of your supercar manufacturers nowadays are kind of selling out and making SUVs. I really didn't like the Aston Martin DBX that I reviewed that much, even though I was fairly positive in the review. If you want to go check that out, I'll leave that linked on top of this video right now. And overall, I just don't like the whole idea that the market is kind of just really, really demanding more sporty SUVs. I just, it doesn't really sit too well for me. However, this new vehicle that I'm about to talk about with you guys, I've already made a video on it, and it honestly probably has to be one of, if not the, um, the vehicle that I am most excited to see in person during the New York Auto Show, the 2023 New York Auto Show next month. I really hope that Dodge brings this out, but it is none other than the 2023 Dodge Hornet. Now, before we get into today's article, and before you guys click away or whatever, definitely be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff down below. It really, really does help me out, and I know it's annoying for you guys to hear every single YouTuber beg for likes or whatever, but it truly does help me out a lot as a smaller car channel here on YouTube. But anyways, today we're going to be looking at a Motor Trend article, and they actually had the opportunity to already take it out on their initial drive and do a actual review on it. Now, I know my channel has been lagging lately, but here in the winter, I'm not really doing a lot of car reviews, unfortunately, which kind of sucks. But today, we're gonna be looking at this Dodge Hornet, and I would love to eventually, hopefully this year, get my hands on one and do a full-on review on it. And I'd love to see how they drive. I mean, yes, it's a four-cylinder, I think it's a turbo four-cylinder, we'll get to that in a bit. A little small compact SC SUV, very similar to a lot of other SUVs out there, to be honest with you. Uh, but still, I'm really excited for this, and I love that Dodge is just not, I don't know, stuffing a Hellcat engine and everything all the time. Now, mind you, that is really fun. I really, really love that. Dodge is truly real unique when it comes to that. However, there comes a time when you want just, I guess, a little bit something different in your lineup. So anyways, without further ado, we're gonna check out this article here. So again, right right off the bat, right underneath the uh, title, they basically call it a compact crossover. They say they don't sell on sporting this, but don't try to tell Dodge that. Like, I, we all get it. There's been many manufacturers that have tried to make these compact crossovers more desirable or whatever for the uh, car enthusiast markets. But Dodge, I think, is actually going to do pretty good because, again, some of these numbers are actually pretty interesting. And right off the bat, like, just looking at the design of it, I really, really like the design. At first, I know I did a video, like, back in the fall or late summer talking about this thing when it very, very first came out and we first saw some pictures of it. And I was a little bit torn on the design, I gotta be honest with you. However, the one thing I really love is this interior. I know it's not a lot and I know Dodge gets a lot of hate on their interiors because I mean, hell, the Challengers and Chargers interiors pretty much were not updated at all over the course of like the last uh, decade or so. But this one I actually really, really like. I like the kind of alternate Dodge logo on the steering wheel, like the two stripes right there. Uh, I really like the door panels as well. There's a lot of nice lines in this, and especially for the price. I mean, this is going to retail in the low 30s, and we'll get to the actual price numbers in a bit here. But honestly, this does not look like a compact SUV that would cost that little, especially in today's new car market now yeah i'm sure you can find something that's better or nicer looking or faster or whatever in the used car market but just when comparing it to other new compact suvs i honestly don't think you can get something as fun for this price tag uh here's just some kind of more in-depth uh pictures of it now another thing that i actually really liked when i first made a video on this is this new Hornet badge. I know you can't really see it from this uh, far away angle, but I, re I really, really like it. It's almost kind of like a nod back to the Super B in a way, uh, but yeah, I, I just think it's really unique. I think it's really cool. And the fact that it's kind of like this new sub brand of Dodge, I think is really, really awesome. I mean, hell, I love it all the time when manufacturers kind of 
market their vehicles in a way where they kind of create their own little sub brands. Ford famously did it back in the 60s with the Mustang. Everybody pretty much all around the world knows what that Mustang pony emblem is. And now Ford's actually doing it again, speaking about Ford, with the new Dark Horse Mustang. And there's gonna be like a little horse emblem on it. I don't know, maybe that's silly, maybe that's childish of me, but I kind of like this new kind of Hornet sub-brand that they're going to make with this logo. And yes, it's only one model, but who knows, maybe they make more performance-inspired trims in the future. Now, looking at uh, the, some of the specs here, so yes, the base price is in the low 30s. However, it can go all the way up to right, basically right under $37,000 now. With market fees and all the other nonsense that you have to get when you're looking at new cars in 2023, it's probably gonna be like 40 grand, especially if you get some stuff specced out on it. Uh, but I'm sure you can find at least some of these in the 30s. I mean, if you get like a base trim one and you start at $31,500 MSRP, add on like a $1,000 shipping charge or handling charge or whatever if you're getting it custom ordered, um, and then on top of that, maybe add like a $5,000 markup fee or whatever dealership markup nonsense that they do. It's still going to be in the 30s, so it's not going to be too bad. And again, there's not a lot of vehicles out there right now that you can get in the 30s that are brand new, that are actually fun and kind of cool. And uh, I think that this is definitely a one. Now, when it comes to the engine, or actually, I guess, looking at the drivetrain here, uh, it is all wheel drive, which I think is pretty nice. Obviously, it's not gonna be four wheel drive or anything. It's not gonna have like a front diff, but it's also not front wheel drive, which is pretty good, I think, too. Uh, because again, with Dodge, they're probably gonna have some sport mode or whatever on it and uh, some launch mode they, they might put on it in the future. But looking at the engine, so you're gonna have a two liter turbo in line four a 1.3 liter NA in line four, if I'm reading this correctly. And then I think the 1.3 liter is also going to have uh, rear electric motors, which is going to make 288 horsepower and 383 foot pounds of torque, which is actually going to be more than the two liter turbo charge engine. Let me know if I messed that up or if I completely botched that. Let me know down in the comments below. You can call me out. I won't get offended. But yeah, that's what it looks like to me, which is honestly kind of interesting. Nine times out of 10 with these like little uh, four bangers or whatever. Uh, a lot of times the performance trim or the trim that's making the most uh, amount of power is the turbo engine. And they have like an NA uh, inline four. Uh, but this in, this inline four again is going to be powered with uh, rear electric motor, so that is honestly pretty cool. Uh, it's also going to be offered in nine speed auto or six speed auto. Uh, it would be really really cool of Dodge if they, uh, you know, offered it in, in like a six speed manual. But obviously that's not going to happen. Uh, we're talking about Dodge here. I, I think they stopped making uh, the Hellcats, or actually no, they did make Hellcat Challengers in manual or available in manual for quite some time but they stopped i think with the charger again correct me if i'm wrong but yeah D dodge hasn't really been on the whole forefront of the save the manual manuals when it comes to all the other manufacturers i feel like there's a bunch of other manufacturers that are actually at least trying to keep it alive dodge has kind of came and went and i don't know i feel like it kind of passed by the idea of putting any manual transmissions in their new cars at least a few years ago. Uh, the curb weight is going to be right around 3,700 pounds to 4,100 pounds. And it's going to be, have a pretty short wheelbase. And then you're going to have the, the GT trim and the RT trim. I believe the RT is going to be the one with the electric motors. But yeah, I mean, again, I honestly really, really don't like vehicles like this. This is very, very on brand, uh, off brand, excuse me, of, of me. And if you've been subscribed to my channel, you know that I really don't like when manufacturers try to make their SUVs sporty and, you know, cool or whatever. I, I just think it's a little bit silly. However, this past like year, yes, we've had the new Type R come out and we've had a couple other stuff, but I honestly feel like this individual vehicle is probably going to be one of 
again, the vehicles that I'm most excited to see in person. Hopefully Dodge does bring it to the New York Auto Show. I feel like that's a no brainer. They definitely would, but again, who knows? So let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, let me know what you would want me to talk about, specifically about the Hornet or another model car that you're excited about coming in this new year that when I go to the auto show or whatever and I see it, you'll like me to do a video on it because that would definitely help me out a lot. And again, while you are down in the comment section, uh, you know, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that stuff really does help me out. But like always, thank you guys so much for your time. It really does mean the world to me. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys in the next one. If you enjoyed today's video, click on either of these links right here to watch a similar video from this channel or click on the little circle link uh, right there to actually subscribe to the channel. It's absolutely free. I do appreciate all the support, but thank you for sticking to the end of this video and I hope you have a fantastic day.